Apollo Automation has added yet two more sensors to their already impressive line of sensors and devices. These are the Temp1 and Temp1B, which is a battery version of the sensor. And these are sensors that you can add external temperature probes to, including a food grade sensor. So let's dig into what these look like and uh, show you what they are. So the sensor comes in two versions. Uh, this is the box that comes in. Uh, this is the 1B box. Each one of these will come in its own box, but uh, they've uh, done a little bit of improvement in their packaging. And so you get a nice little box that comes with it now with the uh, information on it. So you plug the device in the power, connect it to the hotspot, open your browser and go to that IP address right there. And then uh, select the Wi-Fi input password, check home assistant to discover devices. I'll show you that here in a little bit. But uh, this is these are the two devices. This is the 1B. This is the bigger one, obviously, because it's going to have a battery in it. And this is the just the Temp1 sensor. There is a USB-C plug for this one. So this is how you would power it up. And then there is the little hole for the RGB LED that shines through there. And then you have a sensor here or a, a plug for a sensor. This is a 3.5 millimeter jack. And then you have the reset and boot button. Well, actually the reset and boot buttons are on the ends here. And this, I think this is where the buzzer comes out at. So let's just pop this open and take a quick look at it. Go this way here. Just pop open the cover. Just pop right off. And there it goes. And then this is a, again, a 3D printed case. You can, you can print your own case if you want to, uh, but this is just a 3D printed case that comes with the device. And then this is the device itself. It's pretty standard with all of the Apollo stuff that I've seen so far. You've got the ESP, uh, you've got the Espressif uh, ESP32C3 Mini. You've got the three and a half millimeter jack right here, USB-C for, for this particular model. And both boards are pretty much the same. That's the USB-C model right, or USB-C plug right there. And then this is where the buzzer is. And then you have a boot button right here and a reset button right here. And those are all accessible from the outside. The back of it really doesn't have anything on it. Uh, this, this is the back of the Temp1 sensor. If we take apart and look at the battery sensor or the Temp1B sensor. Uh, again, it's the same, almost identical board to the other one. There's a few more components on this, which I believe are probably related to the power handling of the battery. And it just pops out of there. It's a really deep case, uh, just because you've got to put this battery in the back of it. But if you look at the, the difference between the, the back side of both of these, you can see that this is the, the Temp1 that doesn't have the battery. And then this is the Temp1 with the bat or Temp1B with the battery. And the difference is the battery conta uh, containers on there. There's a little bit of uh, extra printing on it for the plus and minus side. And then uh, if you look at the front of it, you'll see here that there's a little bit more circuitry right down here on the battery side than on this one right here. Uh, probably power handling, but everything else is pretty much the same. The the size of the board is is identical aside from it being a little bit wider, obviously, because it has the battery uh, connector or battery holder on it. So that's the inside of these boards. Also with this, you can buy some optional sensors with this as well. And we've got uh, three different ones that you can get. You've got the, um, this is the uh, three, the, they call it the small temp probe. And this is um, 20 centimeters or approximately eight inches long. This is a Dallas sensor that's on the end of it. This will do up to 185 degrees Fahrenheit, 85 degrees Celsius. These are submersible, so you can stick them in water. And then they have the three and a half or three and a half millimeter plug that goes into the board. It just plugs in here. And then you have your sensor. I will say you need to plug the sensor in before you power these up. Otherwise, I don't think it recognizes it. I found that on a different sensor issue that I had or different a different sensor they have, which is the plant sensor. All right, so you also have this one. This is a also the same thing. It's got another Dallas sensor on it here as well. 
and it's also submersible. This one is one and a half meters or approximately five feet long. I didn't think it was when I first pulled it out of the packaging, but it definitely is a five foot cable. And this is good if you want to throw it in your freezer or your fridge and put your sensor somewhere else. It reaches all the way into the fridge, no problem. And then we have this one right here. This is a food grade sensor. You can stick this into your, your favorite steak or your hamburger or your, your brisket or whatever you happen to be cooking. And then this plugs in again to the, uh, to the sensor. And this is, um, right now, this has got a max temperature of 400 degrees. You can't put this any higher than 400 because of some settings or some hardware on the board itself. I, I talked to Apollo and they said that, um, there's a resistor that they're looking at that caps it out at 400 degrees. And that's why, uh, that's as far as it goes. So if you're cooking a br brisket and you want to keep that brisket at about 200 degrees, smoking it for, you know, eight to 10 hours, this would be good for you. Uh, most food that you're going to be cooking isn't going to reach a, a 400 degrees anyway. If you, if you cook your steak at 400 degrees, um, you might as well just eat a piece of charcoal. So this will be just fine for that temperature range. I have some seen some reports out there that this will go up to 600 degrees, but that is not correct for this particular application. So those are the three types of sensors you can buy with it. And finally, you also can purchase this thing right here. This is a little case, a little cover. No, it's not either one of those. This is a magnet mount uh, that you can stick on the side of something. And let me see if I can put one of these back in the case where it belongs. So let's put this one back into its happy little case. And we'll throw the lid on this one. And this little hole, by the way, goes over this little RGB light right here. So make sure when you put it together, you stick that back that way. And then this just sits in here. There's, um, there's a little groove. You can barely see it. There's a little groove that's across the top of this right here and maybe on both sides. Yep. It's on both sides. So you can actually take this little magnet and this little magnet has little grooves on here as well. So this is printed out. Gee, that's a strong magnet. There's a groove on this side and there's also a groove that sits on this side. I know it's hard to see that, but there is a little groove here on this side as well. And you just basically take that, and you put it in the groove and you snap it over into the other groove on the other side. And now you can take this thing and you can stick it and you can stick it to the side. And this is a piece of metal here. It's just, I mean, it holds, it holds really well for the, the weight of this thing. It's going to hold to whatever you stick it on. You can stick it onto a fridge. You can stick it on to anything else. Don't, don't put it where the magnet, the magnet piece, don't put it, the magnet on the, the thing you're sticking it to. Cause if you do that, I wonder if it'll do it here. Yep. See now the magnet's no longer in here and it's stuck to my piece of metal right here. And if you stick this on a stainless steel fridge or something else like that, you're going to end up scratching it, trying to get it off. So make sure that you're sticking this to the side of a device so that this piece sticks right there to that. And then when you pull it off, you're just pulling off the, pl off of the plastic. You're not sticking and yanking that magnet right out of the holder. So there you go. All right, so this sends these uh, devices, they also come with an AHT20-F onboard sensor. You can use that onboard sensor if you want to not use any of the probes, however, when the ESP device heats up, it causes some variations in the temperature. So what you need to do is if you use these devices and you want to use the onboard temperature sensor, you need to put them to sleep and only wake them up every minute or so to keep the temperature uh, low on that ESP device. Now, if you're running the battery version, you're likely going to put it in sleep mode anyway. For the best results though, definitely use those external sensors uh, that come with, that you can purchase with that. So. Make sure you're using these external Dallas sensors, or if you're going to do food stuff, make sure you're using this food sensor here. There's also an RGB LED and a buzzer, and you can set the buzzer to go off if the temperature exceeds a certain threshold on the device itself. So you get an audible or visual alert if something 
for it to be out of your threshold that you're setting for it. Now they claim there's a six month battery life if you set up the optimized sleep settings. Um, I tried. I tried to use this with the uh, batteries that I have here. Uh, these are batteries I purchased that are rechargeable batteries. This is where you have to be careful what you get off of the internet. I bought this as a 2400 MWH. That is a 3.0 volt lithium ion rechargeable battery. It does not do a thing in this device. Uh, it's got a USB-C charging port right on the battery, which is interesting. But I tried to use this battery in the uh, Temp 1B and it didn't work at all. So I've ordered um, some additional batteries to play with that are, they're made for like those Arlo outdoor cameras. So I think those will probably work fine. Um, this one is only three volts. And the one that I ordered, and you can see again, it's somewhere on here, three volts. Uh, I ordered some 3.7 volt batteries, and those are probably be the ones that'll work just fine. So anyway, be careful what you get. You do need to have a rechargeable battery for this because otherwise there's not enough voltage to make it work and get a 3.7 volt type of battery, not a 3.0 volt battery. As I mentioned before, this is all open source stuff. So you can print your own cases. Uh, Apollo never hides any information on these devices. You can really build them yourself if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to spend the time and effort doing that, or you can just buy these. Uh, as of this writing, these are, uh, let me see what the price of these are as of this video, $24.99 US dollars for one of these. Uh, you can either order the battery version or um, the non-battery version. If you decide to order this, make sure if you want the battery version, you click the battery button here. You can get it with no probe or you can add these probes. You've got a, a $5 small temp probe, a $6 long temp probe, and then the food probe, of course, is $6 here. You can get the magnet mount as well. You can use any phone charger you want to use with these things. If you don't have one, you can buy the charger and cable for about nine US dollars. You can get the charger itself for that. Um, and it's still, it looks like a US uh, or standard USB plug in the wall uh, type charger. Now these also are designed to go into Home Assistant. And I'm just going to show you this right now before I get into the other part of it. This is what the temperature sensor was measuring when it was in my freezer. And I just stuck it in there uh, earlier today and it was measuring some stuff and then I pulled it out for the video. So it stopped after I pulled it out. But you can see here it updates every so often. This is the USB-C powered temp one version. So it's always powered. No problem sending uh, frequent updates. If you're using the USB or the uh, battery powered version, you probably want to do updates less frequently than this one is doing it. And oh, I should mention too that they're flat. These are flat cables, which means that when you shut the freezer or fridge or whatever, that they, they don't mess up the seal um, and cause air leaks into your freezer or refrigerator. So that's nice. Nice little touch that they've done there. For Home Assistant, um, adding it is just like you add it any other ESP device. You connect to the Apollo Temp 1 hotspot. Once you're connected, you type in 192.168.4.1 on the browser, find your Wi-Fi network, put in your password for it, and then it should tell you that you're connecting to your network. So when you finally do get it added to Home Assistant, you'll see a new device show up. I'll show you my production here because I haven't added it yet. Come over here to notifications, click on uh, new devices, discover, check it out. And you can click on add. You can select the area where that's going to be at and click on finish. And now it's added to your ESP devices. So if you go over here to ESP home, you should see all of the devices listed here. And here's the temp one sensor. Click on that. And now you'll see all of this information on here related to the device itself. So you've got the um, settings for your alarm outside temp range. So if you turn this on and it goes outside your temperature range, it'll alert audibly. Uh, you can turn the RGB light on. So if I look at this RGB light and I turn that on, you'll see this light come on right here. So that's the RGB light. So you can 
do whatever you want with the RGB light if you so desire. Then you wanna make sure you select the proper probe here, temperature or food. I'm gonna leave it at temperature because right now I have the, uh, the Dallas short temperature probe plugged in. So that's what I'm gonna choose. If you, if you plug in the, uh, the food probe, then you wanna make sure that you cho choose the, uh, the food setting here for this. Of course, you've got the humidity. This is onboard humidity, onboard temperature, and this is influenced by the ESP device inside the, in there. The food probe is unknown because it's not plugged in, but the temperature probe is currently at 68 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. If you don't plug anything, you'll get nothing on either one of these. If you plug in the food probe, this one will go to unknown. So that's not a problem. It just doesn't have the other uh, plug in there or the other temperature probe in there. You can do some offsets here for your temperature and humidity. If there is a firmware update, you can click here and it'll update the firmware. This is where you set your max probe temperature. So if I set this to 65, I'm gonna try this out. I haven't tried this yet. I'm gonna turn this on to alarm outside the temperature range and we'll see if we get anything uh, going on here. I don't know if it does it on update or what. So let's see. Oh, that's the Celsius. Um, so I want to change it to 68 degrees in here. So that's 20. So let's set it to, if it goes above 18, then I want it to alert. So let's go with 18 Celsius. It's interesting because I'm running Fahrenheit on Home Assistant. So I would think it would do Fahrenheit as a standard. I don't know if you can hear that. But I just got an alert saying it's above the threshold. Played a little song. I think you can set the minimum probe too and get the alert as well. And then you can prevent sleep. If you're plugged in, you can prevent the sleep. Uh, you can do a probe temp offset. There's another alert. I don't know if you can hear that or not. And then this is the ESP temperature on the board itself. And then some other, uh, other stuff like that. So both of these temperature sensors do exactly the same thing. When you have the battery sensor plugged in, you will actually get um, some more information here in this section talking about the battery level or the battery voltage and whatnot. So let me just take you through some of these use cases. I can figure out where my button is. Food safety monitoring. So you can do fridge or freezer monitoring, cooking and baking using the food safe stainless steel probe, fish tank monitoring, pool and hot tub monitoring, uh, attic fan control, you can turn on when temperatures rise above the set threshold, improving ventilation. You can monitor ambient temperatures to improve your HVAC stuff. You can do greenhouse temperature management, remote monitoring. Um, so if you don't have constant power like a shed or a barn and you can reach the Wi-Fi from there, you can monitor there. Uh, room temperature tracking, cold storage units, uh, safety alerts, that's that buzzer does right there. Although you have to be pretty close to it to hear it. It's pretty quiet. So lots of use cases there. Another great product, a great sensor from Apollo Automation. If you want to grab them, I've got some links down below. I've also got some links on my blog. Uh, these are affiliate links. So if you want to support me a little bit just by purchasing these through the affiliate link, that would be great. And uh, let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments and also on Discord. I'm available to answer questions there. Uh, thanks for watching and we will see you on the next video.